I guess my my like a uh, uh, philosophy that I kind of live by is like if I'm if I'm if I want to like whole ass something uh and I can like find somebody who's already whole assed something then I would just <laughs> prefer to prefer to get their advice than yeah, you know I'd rather spend like 10 hours with like somebody who knows what they're doing than 100 hours trying to like figure it out myself you know Yeah that makes um, sense and especially since I'm in a spot in life that like kind of allows that uh so yeah that, that's that's where, probably the big thing uh also i like overwatch so you know yeah i like yeah the improvement yeah i mean it absolutely makes sense like if there's any steps that you can skip why would you not skip the steps you know what i'm saying yeah. um Definitely. so yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. i think the key thing is it's like there's two ways to like categorize life is like one thing is that you can't skip steps on and one thing is that you absolutely can for example um you don't have to understand exactly how the your telephone works to make it work. Right? You just press the buttons and it works. You don't have yeah. to necessarily understand every single detail about like how people learn the value of off angles. You just have to know that somebody says try off angles and you're like, gosh darn it, it works, right? Yeah. Um, that being said, there are some things that you kind of have to just trial and error and, and, and sadly you can't skip steps with those. But at the very least, I can help accelerate that ex expedite that process for you okay definitely, definitely. so how long you been playing uh since season three overwatch one okay uh, okay i did actually have a little bit of competitive experience too back in college we uh i, I played for my school's team mm -hmm. uh basically most of college so i'm not unfamiliar to like coaching and like the improvement sure. process and you know criticism right um i'm yep. not unfamiliar to all that uh yeah i i Pretty much, I like the highest I got was like diamond, and then like thirty two hundred, I think, and then, well, like my senior year came along, and I stopped playing consistently, and I stuck around at plat, uh, okay, for like the end of that until Overwatch two came, and then I played a shit ton more, and then I think I got my rank a little bit inflated at season three. <laughs> uh, yeah, how high'd you get? Um, I'm sorry, uh, uh, it was like masters one, yeah. uh, but like. Also, it's just like one tricking Bastion when he was like super strong. So. <laughs> you dirty rat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know. Um, that grenade was yeah. absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, um, it was crazy. It's like, you I, missed your grenade? Told, That's okay. 100 damage. <laughs> literally, I told my friends, I was like, guys, you do not understand. I should not be this, this high. It's crazy. And nobody believed me, but okay, whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. You got the competitive points out of it, right? You got that one. Yeah, you definitely put that one on your resume as well. Oh, um, for sure. I... <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Okay. Um, so where are you at now? The form it says diamond. Yeah, I usually sit now. So I, for a little context, I actually kind of got bored of Bastion. Uh, one, like one of your videos, I totally agree with. His play style is pretty like flat. There's not really too much flexibility in it. And I definitely yeah. started to notice that after like 50 hours. Um, <laughs> Jeez, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh i've always like i always really liked echo right and so yeah. i uh and but like i didn't play her that much just because i was like well i can't hold this rank if i play echo until one day i was like well fuck it i don't care about the rank i just want to play echo it's more fun obviously i dropped um and so i sat normally around uh like low diamond until like a week ago and i went on a big losing streak um, and now I'm at like plat four, but like, yeah, makes sense. A plat, yeah, I don't really care much about losing streaks, but, uh, um, but like normally I sit around like low diamond or so. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. And on the form, it says goal is just like, I want to get back to masters specifically yeah, on echo. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. So we just need to kind of clean that up. And now in terms of hero pool, now you said that mostly echo, but do you swap? When do you swap? How much do you swap? Do you enjoy still like at, at the form? There's still like. A handful of dps characters thrown in there that you still will mess around with like how does that usually look it's still most i'd stay i'd say it's still mostly echo just because i found that uh since she's such a flexible character i feel like most situations i can still play into her um but there are some times where it's just like really difficult uh if i'm getting like discorded and then double hit scanned and diva i might swap to like soldier uh just so that way i can play you know I can still try and hold some off angles and also sure. I feel like hit scan is just so much safer a lot of time, a lot of the yeah. time. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. I'll play soldier. Some, I can play tracer a little bit. Tracer is my original main. Um, I still play bastion every now and then if I just really need to get some damage out. Uh, 
but yeah, it's sure. actually mostly Echo. So, so why, why is it the pivot now to like taking things a little bit more seriously? Is it something like you have more time freedom than you used to? Is it just a personal short term goal or, or what? A little bit of both, to be honest. I, uh, well, I graduated college and mm. I, you know, I have like my own like job now. Sure. Um, and you know that even though I do have like real life responsibilities, I, I found that like post college, it's really easy, especially in like the like career world. It's very easy to just like when you don't have any like goals set up for yourself to just kind of like, I guess, glide on by. And so I find that even like small short term goals like this, for example, getting back up to masters or like another sure. thing I did recently is like a metal smithing class. Right. Nice. Like little things yeah. to like continuously improve on keeps the mind sharp. And so I guess Agreed. that's like a big thing. So. Okay. Yeah, sure. Sounds good. Sounds good. Very respectable. Uh, in terms of playtime right now, I think you're at like the bottom end for Masters, but it is possible to get where you're at. So I wouldn't sweat it too much. Although I will say that that's could probably going to be like the lowest hanging fruit if you really just want like the easy fix. Yeah. But I, I do think that like what you're doing like five to 10 hours a week is like, that's going to be tough, but it's possible. It's very possible. Yeah. Um, it's just going to be about being efficient with that playtime, whether it's through you know your warm up, making sure that you have goals, make sure that you're taking breaks between cues, all that kind of stuff that you've, you've probably heard me talk about before. But yeah, make sure that, that that that's at the forefront of what you're doing. Okay. Ah, long term goals: be able to hold my own mid masters, maybe grandmaster. Obviously, we'll we'll play it by ear depending on how this goes. Focus on improving my career. Okay, I'm just looking through your form here. Not be there, but no, no. I I I was talking about this with the previous session. It 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 helps me a lot when things are yappy. To be honest with you, because I I actually like know who I'm working with. You know, yeah. And that makes this this process just go so much easier as opposed to sometimes where it's just like one sentence answers or no answer at all. I'm like, ah, gee, this is gonna be great. Like, coaching a brick wall. Okay, uh, general understanding and correct play style to use for each situation seems to be a, a point of pain. For watching the Ultimate DPS Guide for Echo, it was very valuable and teaching me about how flexible Echo play style is. I feel like I understand this on a basic level, but do not have a good enough understanding of the game on a higher level to implement it. Okay, we'll take a look at that then. And then sleep is fine. Uh, do you have any questions before we jump into gameplay? Um, I guess the only thing... Uh, would be finding good ways to get value out of my duplicates because I I probably just need to practice it more uh, or like focus it. But I often find like my dupes are either like they're like way too aggressive and I die almost instantly for it or they're not aggressive enough and I don't build a second ult or even get secondary value. Yep. But also uh, also with that as well of finding a good like mindset, like what should I be thinking about when I'm duplicating? Like Very simple answer. Check this okay. out. It's okay. a great question. Very <laughs> valuable question. I touched on it. Actually, I coached Echo, uh, Platinum Echo, Tuesday? I think Tuesday. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. And, and we talked a lot about this, but this is actually something that's super, super important. So this is the enemy team. All right. Let's just say average whatever split here. Okay. This is you. You might be here or you might be here. A lot of people, when they go for an aggressive dupe, do it this way. Or this way. Mm -hmm. Or this way where they're here and they just push in. Don't do this. Your positioning right. needs to be on the periphery almost exclusively, even when you're duping. Because the reason behind duplicate is that it extends your aggression. It, 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 it Because you have another life, right, essentially. So what I want you to do is when you go for an aggressive dupe, do it mm -hmm. this way or this way, or this way, or this way. Do you see what I'm drawing here? I do. I'm drawing okay. a frame. Okay. So okay. you don't want to put yourself in the middle. That's what's going to get your duplicate broken almost instantly. And it's also not going to cause a much of distraction because they're already looking this way because that's where your team is. Mm -hmm. What you need to do is you need to make them actually turn their crosshair, turn their vision entirely away from you or away from your team. They have to choose. And because you're around, you can also duplicate your cover or your wall or something along those lines. And not only that, but you've cut straight to the underbelly of the enemy backline. You're on their DPS. You're on their squishies. You're not on their tank. So duplicate is a get-out-of-jail-free card that should be used to take a deep angle. And this is the spicy take. You ready for this one? Yes. To make things even simpler. 
it actually doesn't matter that much who you duplicate. Oh, now that that is a that's a good that's a good uh yeah, that yeah. that's a take right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know a lot of people will be like, "Well, wait, no, actually, it, it I mean, obviously it does matter a little bit. Like you still would prefer something that like not a Lucio, but I would rather duplicate a Lucio while on a deep flank on backline than I would duplicate say a Winston in the middle of the enemy team. Okay. Okay. That's like, that answers my next question then. Yeah, because it's all about finding the the deep angle flank distraction harassment and then doing that more. And then you go back and your guy is dead or Lucio is dead, right? And you're still on the deep angle deep flank. So it's like triple value, basically. Um, That's what Echo's duplicate is for. That's what Echo's duplicate is for. The problem is, is most people just run it down mid in the middle of the open and die instantly. And then not only do they die instantly, but when they leave the duplicate, where are they, right? <laughs> they're, they're, they're a horrible position, right? And then also, the whole point of duplicate is that you could do already super hyper-aggressive, super valuable things on a deep flank and then do it more, right? Whereas this is okay, but it's not as good as being over here. Okay. And we'll look at this in game to kind of extrapolate it away from just the Microsoft paint crap. But I'm yeah. telling you, this is this is how you play Echo with duplicate. It's super. It just allows you to take super deep angles, then do it again, and then do it again. Right. Okay. Cool. That's that's going to be really helpful then. Yeah. Uh, you'll probably we'll we'll definitely see this in game. We will bit. see every we'll see it on every duplicate. We'll talk about it. We'll t- we'll talk okay, about cool. it. Okay. Uh, code here. You said may gameplay that you're not uh, particularly interested. in. Yeah. Okay. We'll just look at the Echo then. The it's, Echo it's, is. It's, go ahead. I was just gonna say the maze, just but like right at the end. So okay, sounds good. Yeah, Echo is Echo is tricky. I think Echo is. Uh, it's not so much about like how she functions. That's tricky. Like the understanding the theory is really simple, but then applying it is really hard because what she is is she's that she's the perfect hybrid of short and mid range, short and long range rather. Sorry, where you I have I gave you the wrong replay code. Uh, yeah, sure. I think it was a Give me road one. game. Let me let me load it up real quick. Yeah, do it up. Uh, Go for it. I mean that one can work too, uh, but ah, let me, let let's me optimize. Yeah, uh, let me pull up Overwatch real quick. Works for me. Uh, uh, okay, well, I play Overwatch on Linux, so it takes a minute to load. Ah, no problem. Okay, here we go. Here's the right replay code. Got it. <clears throat> cool. Sorry. Uh, sorry, as you were saying. Mm, mm, no, no. Um, I don't really remember what I was saying. Oh, yeah. The the whole choosing the different off angle and whatever. Yeah, I mean, it's basically like you're the short, long range hybrid, essentially. So you have to decide what type of position that I take. One of the things that we talk about is that there are no play style adjustments. There are no, there are no such thing as different play styles for Overwatch characters, really, almost without exception. What there are are different positions. So for example, people might be like, oh, you play Dev- Echo like a dive character. You play Echo like a poke character. You ever heard that, right? Yes. That's, that's not the way to look at it. The way to look at it is, do I want to take a short, a long off angle or do I want to take a short off angle? That's it. Gotcha. This is what people mean when they mean dive angle. But the thing is, is do you need to like beam dive in crazy here? No, you just, you could throw your stickies and beam from here. Or you could do the exact same thing from here. That's all. Do I want to take a short angle? Do I want to take a long angle? Now look at their comp. What do you think? It's tough, isn't it? Um, yeah. And this is where Echo's tricky. This is, the, but the, the, the good news is, is once you can answer this question, 90% of your problems go away. Right. So what do you think? I, sorry, I guess for this one, at least what I was thinking was try and keep a position on like the junk rat so I don't play too close to him. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, try and focus the soldier because I feel like he's the bigger threat to me in my sure. team. Sure, you could do that. 
So you can even poke here a little bit if you have stickies. You know, you can throw out a stickies or two. But ultimately, you don't want to stay here for too long because ultimately, there's no real, there's not enough threat here, and there is threat to you. So yeah, where's the chunk rat? Can I keep my distance on him and then just get closer to the other people? So what do you think? Do you think doing this would be wise? Probably not. Probably not. But but it depends on where the junk rat is, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Maybe the junk rat's distracted. This might still be worth going for. Okay, so what about poking from here? Not right now, but in the next few seconds. Uh, probably only if the soldier is looking at our doom. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Situational. Okay, then what about here? That actually might be a good position. Might be okay, right? You could even deepen the angle here and then deepen the angle here and then deepen the angle here. You kind of get what I'm cooking here. So just something to consider here. I, I think that like you, you need to give yourself a little bit of time to think these problems through and then just roll it, see what happens. Obviously, stickies were fine. That combo plus mother of all doom punches just like freaking killed everybody, so. Echo is not bad at poking at from range. Echo is also not bad at getting close, but it's all about knowing when do I want to get close and when do I want to keep my distance. Here's the funny thing about Echo. She's one of the best brawl characters in the game when she has stickies, flight, and beam. Right? Mm-hmm. When you don't have stickies, flight, and beam, you're really bad up close. Not really yeah. bad, but but you're not. You're, you're you're. It's really risky, right? Yeah. Something to consider. That myself. See here, this is fine. This is we're just waiting for the fight to start. But you could already be thinking, okay, where can I go here? So, do you think instead of me focusing this ball, I should just be off angling and leaving the ball for like the rest of my team? Or I I think we're at a point in time where this fight isn't really going. We're just kind of chilling. But as this fight evolves, you need to be thinking, okay. Fight's going to happen somewhere around here. Where do I want to go? Is this good? Uh, probably not with the Junkrat. Too close. Yep. Yeah. And somehow simultaneously too far from the Zenyatta as well. Worst of both worlds. Okay. So what about here? Um, still probably a little bit risky. Okay. What about here? That might, that's actually much better though, I think situational right you don't forget you also have verticality here too so the way that you approach things can even be like this all right so how could you approach this fight how could you approach this fight think about it uh we'll let I it play would... just a little bit oh yeah but you you go ahead be answering it as we're kind of letting it go yeah um i guess maybe a smarter way would be to play through the hall and then try and get above like these uh like the, yeah like right where yeah. you're flying a second ago yeah 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 you're a tempo yeah. character your tempo character. We talked about this on Tuesday when we reviewed the plat echo. And but what tempo means is that means that you're on a time schedule. It doesn't mean that you have to go fast. It doesn't mean they have to go slow. It means that when you have cooldowns, you can go for a cycle of pressure, then use your flight to disengage, rinse and repeat. The problem with what you're doing here is you are tempoing. You see this? Mm-hmm. You see that? But where are you tempoing from? Oh, uh, yeah, just a suboptimal position. It's very suboptimal positioning, right? Not near enough space created, not near enough threat created, and also very high risk because you're not taking an angle. You're kind of pushing from main. And because you're pushing from main, you're also having to use your flight to get where you want to be. So if you get, you don't have a defensive cooldown anymore. You see this? Whereas if you're here, maybe you could use your flight to set this up, or maybe you just do your stickies beam and then fly away before the junk rat shoots you. That would also work. You know, there's different ways where you can fly up and like you said, use the rooftops to kind of slide and then beam sticky and then you have your flight again. You know, there's lots of ways of approaching it. But the first, this is why the first thing we talked about was like finding what angle you want to play and starting from there. Okay. Because once you can answer that question, everything gets simple. Everything gets simple. Okay. But yeah, like I said, this is kind of just a stagger fest, so there's not a whole lot to pull from this. Yeah. Okay, so now, what do you think? Um, Does this angle make any sense? Because this fight's going to be happening on this choke here. So where should you be? Probably on top of that little bridge thing. So yeah, th- th- this looks pretty reasonable to me, right? Yeah. This looks pretty reasonable to me. Can you get close to Soldier if you need to? Uh... If he pushes past that corner, possibly. Didn't notice that... Well, okay, but also... What if he doesn't push past the corner? Is he a threat? Uh, oh, actually, not really. You see what I'm saying? You've chosen an angle where you can poke the Brig and the May, the Kiriko, and the Doom. 
You could dive the soldier if he presents himself as a threat. And if he doesn't, he can't even see you. Okay. Okay. And this is why this positioning is busted. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and see, now, once you're here, this is where you can have creative freedom. Do you want to go for a dive bomb on a soldier? Do you want to go for a b- sticky beam cycle and then fly out on this brig? Or do you just want to smoke a big fat cigar and just poke from this angle? I don't care. It's up to you. Gotcha. Okay. Cool, cool. It's up to you. see, all of this doesn't really matter because do you see how, like, you want to go aggressive, but you can't? Why? Uh, I'm getting zoned by the soldier. You're getting zoned by the soldier. You're on, an, you're not on an off angle, and not only are you not on an off angle, the range that you're playing is giving the clear sight line on soldier to you. So there's really nowhere that you can play I see. that you could from where you're at. The only solution is something like this. The only solution. Now, you could also go a little crazy with it and flank up behind here. You could have gone a little crazy with it and gone for a cycle back here if you wanted to. Get up close and personal, go for a a tempo cycle here. That would have worked too. But where you're at right now is the worst of both worlds. And now this is where we're going to tie all of this in in a nice, tidy little package because not only should you be doing this, period, but you have your ultimate. So I want you to tell me what should you do with your ultimate from the position you should have been here. Uh, so I think what I was thinking is either duping the soldier and just like beaming them down or sure. duping the May and cutting off the soldier and possibly. Sure. Uh, sure. And remember the rule. It actually doesn't matter that much who you dupe. Remember your mentality from here is I want, now that you have dupe, I want you going hyper crack, crazy, insane ego. I want stickies, beam, poke, ego, full bam. Cop, get in trouble, copy brig, go swing, 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 blam, 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 fly back to high ground. Now, why is that going to work? Because where are you positioned for the duplicate if we were to draw the frame, right? Oh, I would be on the, I would be like behind them kind of. You're on the the outside, right? Exactly. You're not duping from here. If you dupe from here, you're dead instantly. You're duping from here or duping from here or duping from here. You understand what I'm saying? I do. And so that allows you to do all the crazy juicy things from here and then do them again, and then you get forced out, and then you go right back to this position where you start. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, I think I do dupe in the wrong place, so... Uh, well, it, because you're positioned in the wrong place in the first place. Yeah. Like, you're, you're, if this soldier's aim is good, you're going to get your dupe forced right here. Right? Mm-hmm. And what's the problem with this dupe? Target's fine. May's fine. What's the problem with this dupe? What's your uh, positioning like? You know, now I can't really do anything. There's not like you could maybe freeze May, but there's like not a whole lot you could do with this dupe. You're not really causing much of a distraction. The enemy team is already looking this direction. The way the analogy I like to use is that if you have a get out of jail free card, don't use it on a speeding ticket. You know what I'm saying? Commit like Grand Theft Auto or something. You know, like get, like get something out of it, uh, and that's essentially what that duplicate was. It, it it was just bad positioning and this minor threat that you ended up having to dupe because you're so. It's like basically being so financially unstable that a minor speeding ticket would bankrupt you. Gotcha. You messed up okay. if that's the position that you're putting yourself in, where you had to use duplicate on a soldier just poking you from main. Gotcha. Now, what do you think about this positioning here? Obviously, like, let, obviously things are a little awkward right now because your team is still pushing cart, but like, given the way this fight is going to evolve, what do you think? So I actually thought this was pretty strong because really only Doom or Kiri could... Uh, they could, they're the only ones who can really challenge me, but you know, if they do that, they lose a tank or a support in, mm-hmm. in the, in the challenge. And are you so scared? Thought, and are you scared if they, if no. they come after you? No, you have no, your shift, like, you have your positioning, yeah. you have your team's LOS. You're good. Can you poke from this positioning? Yes. Can you quote unquote dive from this positioning? Yeah, definitely. And remember when we ask those questions, it's more of like, can you utilize your long range? Can you utilize your short range? We're not really thinking play styles here. Right. And the answer is yes. Mm-hmm. To both. You could sit here and shoot targets that you want to shoot, 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 or you could get up close to targets that you want to get up close, close, close to. And that's it. Gotcha. And this is this is a problem, right? Like they're they you are so like you you don't even have to do much damage here. They're just uh annoying from here, right? It's scary, it's frustrating, it's disrupting. Mm-hmm. Are you have your cooldowns? Do it again. So when you have your cooldowns, dump, right? Over and over again. So you're giving this angle for no good reason. I see. You see what I'm saying? This Doomfist is thinking like, we got to clear this guy off. We got to clear this guy off. And you're like, ah, I'll just, I'll just leave. 
probably could have just shot yeah. the, uh, the the soldier then. Yeah, shoot the soldier, right? Or just dump your cooldowns on the guy trying to clear you out, right? Make him awkward for him. Make him sweat for it. Sure, and we're back. My problem is that we had flew to the angle when we should have just held the angle, shot the target, and then shifted away. When you fly to a good position instead of being there, that's when you start to have problems. Gotcha. Nice. Wubby tubby removed. And that's the great thing about Echo. We talk about target priority. There's some target priority, but man, you could just shoot anything you want, really. Like you take a good position, it, it just you could kill tanks, you can kill squishies, you can shoot shoot hit scan, you could you could one headshot kills tracer. Like there's so many things that you can do. Um, okay, so now this is where things get a little bit hairy. Yeah. Why does this feel so awkward? Uh Oh, I just realized. Yeah, the other soldiers over there. I didn't even. Right, know. you didn't. You didn't know that, right? So, but you got yeah. close to Lucio, which was fine. He was low, but you ended up creating distance between yourself and the hit scan. That's when you're going to start to have problems. Yeah. Now it's not the end of the world. You, you're trying to snowball this. You kind of lost track. It, it's it's really fine, but it's it's a good food for thought. Like this is when Echo's going to feel awkward. Is when you get close to the junk rats and create distance on the soldiers. I don't even think that was necessarily a mistake besides mechanics. Like that, you saw an opportunity to kill somebody, you went for it. It's fine. You didn't get it. Um, and to be honest with you, that point, this, that point of the map is really hard for Echo because it's very open, completely open. So you have to, you have to solve that situation as best as you possibly can. I was weird. The Lucio voice line went off even though he died. Do you hear that? Yeah. Odd. Okay. Well, that's a, that's a cap. Nice job. Oh, this is a long one. Yeah, it, it's kind of long. We don't have to do. If, if there's not a. Well, let's let's keep going. Let's keep going here. Let's keep going here. Like I definitely think we want to look at the defense here, and then and depending on on how we go, we'll we'll keep going. Let's use our, all of our time here. <clears throat> what do you think? Uh. I think I probably could have been a little bit closer to the wall here because I did not know that they had a cast yet. I sure. Think I, and all down a person. So actually, yeah. I should have known. Okay. So, so, I, but, but, I'm but you're, you're, you're dissecting this and I, I just want you to give it the eyeball check. What do you think of this angle? Uh, I think it's okay. When would this be a bad angle? I'm sorry. When would this be a bad angle? Oh, uh, if the cast starts getting a little bit closer. Okay. Look at their comp. What would you not want to play versus here? Probably what would, either what, the yeah. What would contest you in this small room and make it uncomfortable? Remember, we had the same discussion with Junkrat, right? And Hitscan. It's going to happen again. This is the um, Echo conundrum, right? Probably, uh, probably the Moira or the sure. cast. Sure, sure. Well, actually, Cass isn't too bad up close. It's more of a skill matchup, right? You got Stickies and Beam. He's got Hinder and uh, you know his role, right? But what if they were on, you know, Junkrat again? You know, and he starts slamming yeah. stuff into that room, right? Like, let's say they they run like a Lucio Ryan or a Reaper, and they run in here, right? Like that. This is where like you might change your angle to something like this, right? Now, I don't like this angle versus this comp. Why? If you were here, uh, not really an escape option. Not really an escape option. Really also. Like What's on their back line? You see this? Oh, the, the, the Anna Moira? Anna and Cass, really. This is open space. This oh. is too much distance to play versus a hit scan back line. You kind of see what I'm saying gotcha. here? Yeah, it's a little dangerous. I, I feel like Cass is a little dangerous to play against because he does pretty decently solid at like close range, but also he can still poke. Yep, yep, yep. So it's tricky for sure. But I would still trust my luck on the angle on right. This is absolute insanity. And the most important problem here is that when in doubt, are you on an angle? If the answer is no, 90% of the time you're screwing up. Gotcha. You're not safe here. 
Because look at where all the people in the world are looking at, including the hit scan, right here. Where are they not looking? You see it? It's a free kill. Okay. It's the only way you win this fight, in fact, considering that you're down, is if you trade back lines. And a lot of teams do this. They get, they get one, they just run it on main. They open themselves to this. You get up close to an Ana, Sticky's beam, she's dead instantly. You fly out, you establish your angle, you poke, you poke, you poke, or even just go back where you came from. You're more likely to die here, and you're more likely to do absolutely jack all, which is exactly what happened. I see. Even their strafing from main makes it difficult for you to hit stickies because they're not thinking about strafing on the flank. They're thinking about strafing on main. And sure enough, that's exactly where you had problems. Okay. You weren't on an angle. And on an angle, that would have been very good versus the comp that you were playing versus. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yes, yeah. I guess, uh, so uh, a question with this too. So if I'm playing sure. against a comp like this, do you think it's more, so so if I'm worried about the enemy echo trying to take an angle on us, do you think, because I, I, I feel pretty confident dueling other echoes. So should, do you think it's more value to play defensively to no. keep our echo from getting us or no. should I just, Straight up go for off angles. Choose your off angle that you want to play. And if that echo contests you, beat her in. Mm -hmm. Knock her around. Okay. But if she chooses a different angle, she's making an idiot choice. Your angle's better win. The other possibility as well is like, let's say that you're playing echo with like a Reaper Moira. Maybe their echo doesn't want to go into that small room where you're running Moira Lucio echo, right? Like she doesn't want to go. Instead, she's got like a mercy pocket and she wants to take a long poke angle. So you guys might have com two completely different angle goals. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? So like, she's like, I, I want to play pokey, pokey, pokey. You're playing into hit scan and you're like, I want to get up close and personal. And remember, we're not talking about play style differences here. We're talking about positional differences here, angle differences, range differences here. So that's all it is. But yeah, don't don't purposely go out of your way to mark an echo. Play selfishly. If anybody contests you on that angle, duel them. If there's nobody on the angle, kill their backline. That's the rule. Okay, cool. Because I think that's what I was trying to do, and I think that really caused problems. Was it I does. To play for the, okay. Yeah, I it did. It did. It did. Because you can't really consistently mark. It, like you, it's 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 not what you want to play. Where can I maximize my value? Because that's what's useful for my team. Because even if you didn't kill Ana there, you would demand a response instantly from both the Cassidy and the enemy Moira as well, which would have completely allowed, you probably would have allowed, your wrist probably lives if you take that angle. Okay. Um, even if you don't kill the Ana. Gotcha. Okay. Good to know. And then again here, it's like the first thing you need to be thinking as you're rolling back is where do I need to be? Answer, not here. Not here. Stay here. Stay here. You have your cooldowns. You have an angle. Blam, go for your cycle here. Brrr, boom, doesn't work. Go back and try it again. Because this is, again, this is where you die. This is where you die. <laughs> Main is not safe. <laughs> nice. That's so satisfying. Nice job. It's so good. It's a great. I really enjoy Echo. I think, I think in another life, I'd be an Echo main. I think Echo is like one of those. Yeah. Echo is like the one who got away from me. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm always thinking I about totally, like. I totally feel it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> okay. Where should you be? Where should you go? And remember, you have copies. So do what you would normally do and then just turn up the greed 50%. Um, probably take that room on the top of the bridge. Kind of hard to get like there. But yeah, you, if, you can, if you can get there, get here, you know, like hug the wall. Yeah. You ready for this one? If you can't get there, Hard flank. Uh, okay. Hard flank. Okay. You have your copy. Who cares? And, and you're on the outside too, right? That's the rule. As long as you're on the outside, you're safe. So you go here, you dump your stickies, you beam, you, you do all sorts of stuff, you copy, you roll backwards and you poke, you poke, you poke, you poke. If they kill you, you're just going to fly right back to cover and you're fine because you have cover and because you're on the outside. If you get copy, your copy force here, you're dead. And then you're going to die after the copy's over too. Gotcha. And, or in this situation, because you're playing distance and again are not on an angle you're gonna get your copy force by a competent hit scan sound familiar right exact same thing that happened on our attack i think this is what happens here too and there it is right yeah Correct. and nothing really happens yeah i mean let's let's not lie you did get value but nah 
I think it was from my tank and my cure. My yeah, your, your tank, your cure, your Valk, and all that kind of stuff. Like, you got, you got value, I guess, but, you know, could have been so much more. And what will often happen is when you, sometimes you'll, probably like 30, 40% of the time, you'll take a really deep flank because you have ult, or a really deep angle, really greedy. You'll go in, you'll dump your cooldowns, and they just die. And you're like, oh, well, I guess I'm not ulting. <laughs> yeah. Like, you, they, just, they just die. It's like when you have nothing to lose because you have copy, that, that type of hubris can just win you fights straight up. Mm -hmm. Okay, we know where the fight's going to happen. It's going to happen somewhere around here. Where do you need to be? Uh, should probably be... Tricky, isn't it? Yeah. Um, <sighs> I could go closer to our Arissa, but I feel like the safer option would be uh, that top room behind, uh, behind our Mercy. Or uh, yeah, you, you could you could sit here and do a little pokey pokey here, and then you can rotate this direction. You could play with your Arissa here, and then if you see an opportunity, rotate out this way. Like the key thing here is like you know this is where like people are like, oh, what's an off angle? I don't know what an off angle is. Well, right now it's like the reality of the situation is is you poking from here is technically an off angle because you have people here, right? That's fine. You don't have to be on your own off angle. That, that, that's, it's totally fine to stack with other people. The reason why I don't like this off angle, though, is it feels too far again from the hit scan backline. Okay. So you could, you could stack with your Arissa here and then rotate for something deeper here. You could do what you said here and pokey, 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 and then look for a rotation here. Once they walk forward, I'm okay. Yeah, I noticed that Echo just has so many options just because she's so mobile. Uh, it's like... I feel sometimes picking the right one is, uh, can be a little bit difficult. Oh, yeah. That's why you have to streamline your options, where it's like, I want you looking for the angle that complements what you want to do versus the enemy comp. And because the enemy comp is not ever, not always going to be very simple, just go with your gut. Go with your gut. Okay. Because they, they have a poke hero, but they also have a short range hero, and then they have an echo, but what if the echo has a mercy? Don't, 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 don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. What feels right right now? You tell me. What feels right? With what you see on your screen, what feels right? What direction? Um, I would probably go over to the right in that room again. I, I, I'm a right through fan. here? Yeah, I'm a big fan and, of this and, area. So I can fall back for a few And let's see. Ah, ah, ah. Your gut was correct. You see it? Oh, because the, oh, the, yeah, I guess the hit scan's right there too. They, they rotated that direction. So your gut, 100% yeah. accurate. And the best thing about it is if they had been, if you had been wrong, like let's say they had rotated through here or rotated elsewhere, then you could have just, you know, got a different angle, kept going, kept rotating, right? Kept rotating, kept pushing, and you would have caught them. Yeah, it's good. Love it. Anything's better than where you're at right now. Yeah. You're just standing in the middle or frontlining, no angle at all. So many, like, you could have died here so many times. Thank you for closing the distance on the Casty. Prefer you to do it from a side angle. Gotcha. But yeah. yeah your gut is your uh, gut is smart. Your gut is smart. Trust your gut. I'm noticing uh, positioning uh, as a recurring issue here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but not just the positioning, right? Because positioning is vague. What about your positioning? Or, like, the, the off angle. The, the off angling. Point. Yes, yeah. off angling. Exactly, exactly, exactly. All right, so it looks like we're holding this choke now. Let the gut talk. Where do you want to go? So you're going to uh, fall I back here. Let's just, let's just say for, for sake of argument, they're not on Wrecking Ball here. They're on Arisa Mirror. Where do you go? Um, what does your gut say? If they're on Arisa, I might even be able to take that, uh, that upper building to the top left. Like up here? Yeah, because you got it. Like, okay, yeah, you got it. Pushing, I can just like rotate back. Yeah, they're on on a soldier, or whatever. You've got the angle here. You could even hide here. You can rotate back. You could rotate back through this way. You, you got all, yeah. There's risk. Obviously, there's risk. But there's risk where you're standing right now. Uh, but yeah, good. Again, I love it. 100 percent agree. Heck, you could even do this. You know. This way you can poke if you want to poke, and then if you get in trouble, you can disengage, or if you want to get close, you can just rotate your angle here. Yeah. It's good. These decisions are much easier in hindsight. Well, it's much easier because we're also not playing the game right now. Yeah. It's much harder to actually do these things while playing. But do you see, again, like, do you feel useless? Do you feel like you're just like hoping people walk into your shots, right? This is, it's just, it's the consequence of your positioning right now. Like you just don't have a very good sight line. Everybody on your team is in one giant, like red pill, right? And, and the red pill did not in a good way. Um, and, and so, and then even this copy, right? What, what is this going to do? 
right? Are you staged for this? Were you able to cool down Dom? Were you able to split their attention? No. Again, the problem is not the copy here. It's when and where the copy is coming from. Yeah, I, I definitely see that. I got completely shredded. Yep. And now you sh oh, you should have died there. Like even this here, like I think there's maybe a little too much attention on the wrecking ball because I look at this here, I'm thinking, crap, we're gonna lose this fight. Where do I need to go immediately? Mm -hmm. What do you think? Uh, I guess with the amount of time or space, maybe I could hide in this room if our tanks can get back. Just, just even ball. if he, even if he doesn't get back, just go, just go. Okay. You get okay. this is the only way you're gonna clutch this fight. Is doing. Remember the first point? It's the same thing, right? Same thing. You are not going to clutch this fight doing this. It's not going to happen. In fact, you're probably just going to die to hit scan doing this right here. Bam, should be dead. I think I do, actually. You know? But this, yeah. there's a chance. There's a 5% chance you pop off. Or at least get a trade, right? Like, what are, what are you going to do? So the question, is it the target priority dictating your positioning? Or is the positioning dictating your target priority? Is it were your, Was your positioning bad because you're obsessed with ball? Or, you know, vice versa? Yeah, no, that's okay. That's true. I see that. So I think, like, obviously, like, you know, angle, angles, angles, idiot, you know, slap, 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 slap. But it, 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 something to consider is that it might be that you feel this propensity or need to peel your backline, and that's chain, that's hurting your off angling. Something to consider. Gotcha. Okay. But remember what we said on first point defense. The only thing that would have saved your Arissa from dying versus the Wrecking Ball engage was making the Wrecking Ball engage by himself. And the Cass Autumn Warrior are distracted by you. That's the only thing that's going to save his life. Okay. And same situation there. You didn't even successfully kill the ball. Why? Because he's got a double support pocket up his butt cheeks, right? It's not that shooting ball is bad. If you take an angle and you could shoot a tank from your angle, shoot the freaking tank. You're great at shooting tank. But prioritize the position first, and then let okay. the target go from there. <clears throat> Obviously, we know where you need to be here as this fight evolves. A little awkward there because their hit scan are playing really far back. But see, I like this. This is cute. This is cute because you're like, oh, crap. I take this high ground. Their hit scan are playing really far back and looking at me. But you know what? You, that's not the only thing you could do from that angle. You can just sit and spam tank. Exactly what we just talked about, right? right. This is great. This is good. And this, if you were on the floor, you might die to their hit scan, or you might not be able to see the ball very well because of the stupid pillar. But you take this position, now this ball doesn't have any cover. Bam. Nice. Now, where should you go from here? Um, I could probably rotate through the room. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, actually, no. Actually, I'd probably go up. Uh, I probably should be going up uh, to the top. Like right that uh Ah yes, yes. Okay. Quickly fly to your flight cancel and cut off. And again, do you notice again that you're around blue? You're not pushing in this way, you're taking a different angle to the outside. And then you could poke and drop stickies and kind of harass. This is terrifying for them. Terrifying. And you're unpushable as well. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, I don't think I mean, this I'm isn't sure. this isn't bad, right? You're still on the outside, you know. It's just yeah, yeah. Great recognition there. Great recognition. Telling you, you're nailing the positioning. You're nailing the positioning. Again, I know it's easier given the format they're in right now where we're kind of like taking our time, but it's, you're doing a really good job with this. It's good to know as well. I'll definitely know how to keep this in mind for, for future mm -hmm. games as well. So, And now the Circuit Royale first points. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's rough, right? Oh. There's, there's, like, let's be honest here. There's definitely going to be some maps where there isn't going to be as many options as there are here, but... Mm -hmm. That that's more of the map and not your ability to, to problem solve necessarily. Yeah, I'd okay. probably just, especially if they have good hit scans, I'd probably just go soldier that point because it's just so mm -hmm. much safer. Now this is funny. I actually think you backing off here is a mistake. Oh, okay. Because you had a really nice angle, you had a mercy pocket. You could have absolutely butchered this wrecking ball. Or if he's not even there, again, what's the best angle if you want to go for pressure on a hit scan backline? Look at that. Uh -huh. Come on. Come on. Yeah. You see this? This is unbelievable. And this has nothing to do with, again, play style. It's, I don't want to play poke with Soldier on, a, on their level sight lines. I want to get above their heads, on top of them with stickies, and burn them, right? And I don't even need to commit. I don't even need to sit here and just ruin their days, right? And also, I'm 87% an ultimate. 
So why would I not just cool down dump on high ground, kill somebody, then copy soldier or Moira or Anna or freaking wrecking ball? If I copy wrecking ball here, guess what? I got a slam right there, right? And I'm immediately on the back line. So by all accounts, because do you see what you're doing right now? Mm-hmm. I'm just in the soldier's sight line now. You're in the soldier's sight lines right now. You're not going to die here, but you're not going to kill him either. And he's just going to be a nuisance. Just a giant mess. You might be able to live here, actually. Actually, I think we do pull. I think I think I make this move after, uh, like after the fight. What's funny is this is the this is the best thing you've done the entire so far. Like this is this is the best thing you've done. On the periphery, copying the soldier. Oh, this is this is good. This is great. This is great. So first off, timing here, right? Your team is walking out of spawn. So the enemy team has stuff to look at. So then this, you are up close on the hitscan character. Bam, dead. Then you get, after the kill, you're all forced. But remember, the blue pill. You're outside the blue pill. And not only are you outside, you're all the way behind. These guys are cooked. Yeah. You see it? I do, I do. And that's it. It would have been that's better to do that a little bit earlier in the fight, I guess, but... Okay. Uh, maybe. You, you needed your team to, like, provoke a little bit of a distraction first. I think, if anything, you should have killed the Cassidy faster and then, okay. um, like, hit more stickies, and then you wouldn't have had to copy quite as quickly on the soldier. Um, like, for example, you could have killed the Cassidy, like, instantaneously, like, boom, and then flown up here, shot, 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 then copied the soldier from here. Um, okay. But even though the execution wasn't perfect, the, the idea and general approach was... Okay. Very good. And it, and it won. It won the fight instantly. Instantly. They even mirrored ultimates on you guys. I think they used Nano Visor. Oh, I think they did. I forgot. They did. Yeah, he, they, they did. And he just freaking died. That's it. So you just completely fumbled the bag last fight and then completely carried your team. Like, your team had no business winning this fight. I nice shot. So you can actually see the Microsoft Paint in action. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thinking about that, each each of the ults, I'm like, okay, how does this fit within Microsoft Paint? You know? Yeah, yeah. And you see it fit perfectly, right? Like it, it was yeah. it was pr literally perfect. You killed two people by yourself. Uh, you distracted the entire enemy backline, caused complete panic. Uh, so you got the direct and the indirect value out of that angle. That was beautiful. Sure. Same kind of thing here. Don't get overly focused on ball here. Um, I do think the target party is a little bit, a little, definitely, you're definitely very heavy on the ball here. I should probably just be taking the high ground, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I would, what I would do is do exactly what you did two fights ago, which is like drop stickies and squishies, shoot, shoot, shoot ball, shoot, shoot, shoot ball. Basically dare the, 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 the hit scan to walk closer. Sure. And when they do punish them. But yeah, if the hit scan are just parked back here, there's not a lot you can do. But okay. the good news is there's also not a lot they can do either. <laughs> So it kind yeah. of becomes a stalemate where like one of you has to make a mistake, but they have to push cart. They have to walk forward at some point. They have to take a risk. And then once they take a risk or they take an angle, now they're opening themselves up to you getting on top of their heads. Sure. So if they are playing a million miles away, I mean, even a Widowmaker playing here doesn't really have a great sightline, right? She has to at some point walk forward. So yeah. Okay. Now from here, what you could do is you've got options here, left or right. Fly through here, yeah. right? Or if they're all on cart, you can flank this way and do things like this, right? You know, now we're- forget about this room right here. Yeah, a lot of people do, a lot of people do. Now, right now this angle sucks because they actually haven't pushed forward. Mm -hmm. So left would be better, but yeah, something to consider. But you need to get close to these hit scan. You need to stop playing patty cake with this guy. Like you're gonna lose this fight if this is where you stay. Yeah, I think we do, so. Good, we're back, we're, but we're so back. Good, 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 good. Careful, careful, careful. Yeah, that's good. It's fine. Now ignore him. Now, now, okay, so really quick. So once you, you know, punish, 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 nano, 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 you have your ultimate, now what? Uh, I should fly to the high ground and dupe the soldier. Fly up, shoot, 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 get your copy force. And again, you're on the outside. You would love to be in the back line, but you can't get there. But you know what? You're still on the outside. It works. So I want to see what you do. Only thing I would do here is don't copy immediately. Okay. Here's why. 
Extend your greed is the way to look at it. You kind of see what I'm saying? Yeah. So like if you can go here and shoot, 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 make the soldier look at you and then you get to like half, then pop it, you're cooking. Mm -hmm. um, that might mean that you need to change your echo settings so that you don't have to have an additional button confirmation. The, you don't have to run the confirm, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so you can copy quickly so you don't actually like wait too long. But yeah, besides that, this, this is okay. That I, I, helix bugged. That helix bugged. Okay, check it I, out. It, I remember it out. seeing that in game. I was like, "Where did my rocket go?" It went through the floor. What? Look, 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 look. I got owned by kings. Are you okay, dude? It All actually right. goes straight through the floor. All right, dude. Okay. That 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 is actually very tilting because I think you played this one quite well. And if you lose this fight, it's actually the game's fault. Yeah, we do lose this fight. Helix. Ah, that's your mistake. That's your mistake. Oh, wait, 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 wait. You redeemed yourself. You redeemed yourself. No, don't go back. 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 Ah! You're running out of time. You got to go. Honestly, here, with the situation as it is, I think I would just go all in here. Oh, just like drop down? Just drop down full sticky. Just and somebody has to die. Like, they must die. It has to happen. So that's probably what I do. Um... With that being said, this is this is okay. Oh, yeah. If it makes you feel any better, this again is a very, very reasonable approach to this fight. I'm actually quite pleased with how you've played this fight. I think there's a lot of little details that could have been cleaner, faster on the angle, make sure they actually secure the kill. Obviously, the, the ghost helix sucked. Um, but yeah, you played this fight well. You played this fight well. The question for me, is it because you were just like, oh, hi. I, I think the reason why it played well, I'm going to do a little bit of guesswork here. Let me know if you think I'm right. It felt more like, oh, this is high ground. So I'm going to play this high ground. And it didn't, but because if it wasn't high ground, would you have solved the positioning? You kind of see what I'm saying? Yeah. Because high ground's good. But like, what if there's no high ground? Like, how do you, do you take an angle? Or, and, and like, I think people like over prioritize high ground and don't prioritize high off angles. And it just turns out that, that on that uh, point, high ground is the only off angle you can have. So it was good. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I think that definitely got a little bit carried for that. Because I, I definitely wasn't really thinking about off angles. I do just know that that position is quite strong on third. Right, right, right. And it was quite strong specifically because they were on poke. Mm -hmm. or So you could get up nice and close and personal with it. But again, you know, you did a good job with it. Okay, any questions so far? We got a few more minutes. Um... I don't have anything specifically right now. I think this has been very en enlightening. Sure. Uh, Good. I think this is, a, I know a couple of things I should probably be focusing on specifically. Just Good. Good. Let's, issues. let's watch one or two more fights and we'll take some notes here. Yeah. You know, this is fine, but obviously as this like fight seriously evolves, you're going to want to get a little bit more of a poke angle or more of a, a closer angle to everything but the Genji. So, you know, you see where the Genji is, you see where the Wrecking Ball is. I don't even need to ask you where you need to be. You know exactly where you need to be, right? Where? Yeah, I should probably be up closer to where the Wrecking Ball is. And you got it. You could either take this angle here and poke the Wrecking Ball from this angle here, or you could go right back where you were before and do the exact same thing again. You see what I'm saying? Yes, yes, definitely. Get closer to the on now. If Genji and Moira get up in here in 30 with you, yeah, 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 you're gonna have to leave that angle, right? Those guys are good up close. But then that means that you could take this angle over here, right? It can't be in two places at once. They have to choose. Do it, do it, do it, do it. Let the voices win. You're not going to win doing this. Yeah, I, I mean, think, even uh, when you get full stickies, there's just no way of securing that kill. Good, 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 good. See, this is good. This is good. Because what this is, is this is, this is a problem they have to deal with directly. You're here. This Genji or Moira have to come after you. And if they don't, then you're going to kill them. If they do, you just took like an absolute multitude of pain away from your tank and your backline. See, like, look at this. This Moira just faded. Like, this is this is like a great example of why these angles matter. This Moira is in trouble. Watch her. So she's gonna fade to safety, right? Wrong. Oh yeah, she fucked up. I should have just beamed her there to be. You honest. know, but but this is why angles is important. You deny cover. You deny disengage routes. There is nowhere safe for her to go. You missed the opportunity, but at least you were there for it. That's okay. You just were there too late. That's all. Yeah, I think we ended up 
losing this afterwards, but uh, they do get this point. But they don't get super yeah. far from it. Yeah, let's let's watch one more because I want to see one more ult. Yeah. Okay, our team's here. Solve the problem. Uh, I should probably be up. I should probably be trying to take that uh that top high ground. Uh, you could. Oh well, well mm, no. Maybe I could probably actually be on. Uh, you can't see my cursor, but the, the like bottom bottom left like room. I could like here. Like, yeah. Yeah, you could. You could. You need. You can LOS on a soldier and it, like and try and poke, 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 poke. And then if they hard dive you here, you copy. Okay. It's it's a like a slightly lower risk, lower reward, but it still plays by our rules, right? It still plays by our rules. And in some situations, this would be better. Like, let's say you're playing versus a, a Winston Sombra Tracer or something like that. Maybe you want to play more for your poke. You could play for it here. Yes, that's 100%. Okay. You could also secretly flank up behind here, poke the Skinji out, do something crazy over here. Oh, good point. You could. And if you had had the time or your, your Kiriko had been here sooner, if you guys had taken the fight in this corner, you could have held up here and then been cautiously doing the Genji, maybe copying if you need to. But yeah, 100%. But do you know exactly when and where you're going to get your copy forced? Right in the middle. Or even worse, yeah. inside of your own backline. Again, Moira's yeah, a fine right. copy target. Again, we're not, we don't care about copy target. And then now, what the frick is your copy doing? That's not, it doesn't do it. Like, the whole point of copying a character is that you could take a greedier position than you normally would be able to. Otherwise, it's just a normal 5v5, you know? Yeah. You just played Moira. Why, why play Moira? But what if you could just teleport and be Moira over here? Now we're cooking. You kind of see what I'm saying? I do. The whole advantage of copy is not, oh, I, get, I can actually get to use their ultimate, right? The whole point of copy is that I can position as an Ana on the flank. <laughs> you know, Grandma can be in the most... Like, Grandma could play... We could we could put grandma up here, right? She just now grandma can wall climb. You know what I'm saying? Like you could do all sorts of crazy stuff. So okay, let's uh, let's take some notes here. Okay. Echo, what do you need to work on? Uh, definitely my off angles for sure. Off angles. Look at enemy comp slash map between fights. Think about what angle to choose. Go with gut. Experiment. Rinse and repeat. You're going to make a lot of mistakes doing this. A lot of mistakes. We don't care. Yeah. I'm we don't care. That. We don't care. This is the long term goal, uh, a long term path, rather, to success. And you'll get better and better and better in knowing which positions to take versus different compositions and different situations and different maps the more you do it. What Sounds else? Good. Uh, definitely better dupe targets. Look for the frame. Uh, yeah. With and, dupe uh, equals. Deeper, greedier angle on the frame of the fight, not in the middle. Go greedy, spam, copy whatever, stay on the frame, rinse and repeat. Dupe just allows you to do what you normally do, but do it better. That's it. Gotcha. Um, last thing I'll say is keep an eye on peeling. I said peeing. Don't keep an eye on peeing. Healing back may be affecting your off angle juice. If that makes sense. Gotcha. It Not sure. That. It might be something to kind of keep an eye on. If you have this internal urge to go back and help your backline, that might be what's compromising your position. Uh -uh. Cooling yeah, usage was fine. Right. Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, I was going to say... Honestly, probably. I feel like I spend more time peeling instead of taking off angles. If I just get a little bit greedier, I think that might help a lot with yep, this. Yep, yep, yep. And the other thing, too, is, is like if you get on those off angles earlier, you will be peeling. You'll need to peel for yourself. <laughs> yeah, true. Because they're going to have to put attention and resources on you. And so you'll notice that your backline's like you know, chilling and pocketing you rather than mm -hmm. the other way around because you're the one taking proactivity. Uh, and so you'll be taking heat off of your backline just by the simple fact that you're on a better position in the first place. Gotcha. And remember, the fi final thing here is that when you take these off angles, do expect the attention on you to increase. But that's okay. fine. You're, you're built for that. You're, this is why cover usage is important. This is why it's important to have your flight. Uh, you're going to be dueling people for off angles a lot. Uh, but that's what you're meant for. You're meant to take attention. And if you, two people look at you, the team should win the fight. Gotcha.
And did you wait? So I think you mentioned something about the cooldown too. How was or like what was your thoughts on like cooldowns are? Um, I think your cooldowns are fine. The cooldowns are fine. The only thing I would say is just make sure that you have make sure you have your CDs on the angle. Beam stickies really good for tempo cycles as echo where you go for close range assassinations, flight to deepen or to escape if you get pushed. Gotcha. Play your range, right? Whatever the enemy comp is, mm -hmm. I don't know. Echo is a high, I, I like to, like I said, I like to look at Echo as the first Overwatch 2 character where yeah, she's this weird hybrid. Character. Yeah, she's that weird hybrid, right? So you kind of have to choose what you want to do. And it's very, it can be very difficult when you're playing into that Junkrat soldier, right? Mm -hmm. That Genji Ana. But trust your gut. Prioritize the angle, and once you're there, just cook. Cool. I appreciate this. Uh, I do no actually have to head out here. Yeah, quick. no I problem.